creation joins us in praise, lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God forever. In case you don't know, that's my favorite song. So that's why we sing it when we, we knew we were not going to have an organist today. So. I said, we're going to sing my favorite song. We praise God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May our Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let each of us begin our day and our week by calling to mind yesterday's sins, but today's hope of God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread that came down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to bring life to your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy on us to pardon what conscience dreads, to give what prayer does not dare to ask. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spayed it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled, Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. The vineyard, the vineyard of, of the Lord, Lord is the house of Israel. Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruits? The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beasts of the, f of the field feed upon it. The vineyard, the vineyard of, the Lord, of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. 
Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the son of man whom you, you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants who he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you ever read in the scriptures, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord? Has this been done? And it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that will produce its fruit. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, my friends, I almost always talk about the gospel. And that's by design. But sometimes the second reading, which is an independent theme, should, should not be uh, overlooked. And that's especially true when we get Paul's letter to the Philippians. Because it's Paul's best letter, in my humble opinion. He, he says, have no anxiety at all. But in everything, by prayer, petition... With thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. Have no anxiety at all. 
and you'll have peace. Well, a couple of distinctions need to be made to understand this. There's a difference between fear, worry, and anxiety. Fear, worry, and anxiety. Now, those things can be interwoven, but they are three distinct things, okay? Fear is, say, I'm, I'm out jogging down West Market Street and, a, and a, a German shepherd or a pit bull attacks me, as has happened. Okay, that's fear. Okay, you can take your leg off. That's fear. That's a good thing. If you don't have fear of that dog, you're going to go without a leg. Worry is... You know, you're sitting in the doctor's office waiting for the results of the MRI. Can't do a thing about it. It is what it is. And the results of that are going to be very powerful, good or bad, either way. And you're sitting here just waiting to know. That's worry. Okay? Spiritual anxiety. Okay, spiritual anxiety. I don't mean anxiety like, is my team going to win the game? No, I mean, real spiritual anxiety is an animal of its own. And there's a lot of it. It's easier for me to give you an example of spiritual anxiety than try to describe it. There was a guy down at the former Bishop Hannon building yesterday. He's a nationally known speaker. I met him before in Toronto when the Holy Father came to Toronto. And he, he often tells this story. He lives and works in Colorado at a town named Littleton. Littleton has a high school by the name of Columbine. And his parish is like two blocks away from the school. So they do drills, a fire drill. They go to his parish. You know, they open the doors and that's where the kids can go in case there's you know, a fire drill. Well, as you may have heard, I think it was 99. 10 kids got killed, as we all know, those of us old enough to remember. And um, a lot of the kids ran to, to the rectory or whatever, the auditorium, whatever. So it's his job to plan the funerals and the weddings. That's what he does at that parish. He's an excellent musician. So he was sitting down with the first mother who had to bury her kid after Columbine, knowing that the whole country is going to be there and CNN's going to be there. It's going to be crazy. And so he's going over the liturgy, just like we do. We do 100 funerals a year. We have people who say, here's the readings, here's the songs. So he, he's got the woman sitting there who lost her kid. Funeral is tomorrow. And he's going over the readings. And he's going over the songs. They get to the communion song. They're almost done planning the Mass. Communion comes at the end, as you very good Catholics know. And he says, now we can do, you know, gift of finest wheat or one bread, one body, different songs that we do. We do them. And the lady grabs his sheet of paper, puts her finger like up and like grabs his tie. He's not a priest. He's a, he's a lay person. And she says, do you think I care about what song you're going to do for communion? Do you think I care? My son is dead. And the whole country is going to be here to watch me walk in, bawling my eyes out while we have to bury my kid because two shooters went crazy. Do you think I... Sing the Star Spangled Banner. I don't care. That's spiritual anxiety. I don't care. I quit. It doesn't matter. That's spiritual anxiety. That's a very powerful thing. And you might say, it's why I have a job. Because I deal with a lot of people who quit. It doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Who cares? And when you get there, Paul was right. You can't have peace. You, you can't pray when you quit. It just, it's over. That's spiritual Anxiety, that's a lot worse than fear or worry. And, and, and what, look how it happens. The person who's there, I don't care anymore, has no hope. 
Okay, where does hope come from? Hope comes from faith. I believe in Jesus, therefore I have hope that when I die I'll go to heaven. But if you don't have faith, you can't have hope. And when you don't have hope, you can't have peace. So you look around church and you don't see anybody in their 20s. Read the long story in today's paper about the nuns. Young people are just fleeing all religions. They, they want nothing to do with religion, wh wh whatever. So you have no faith and you lose hope. Well, then you, and you can't pray. The water starts going down the, the sink very fast and you can't get out of it. What's the number two cause of death among young people in our country? Suicide. Because the anxiety has won. And if you have no hope, then why bother? The world would be better off without me. There's one in the paper pretty much every day. You're intelligent, you can, you can see when the kid just quit. People with faith, that, that, if people with strong faith, that won't happen. Now, yeah, I can go right out that door over to Leggett Street, and a month ago today, I'm there with people who lost everything, maybe some of you. But, you know, Father, God will get us through this. That's right. He'll get you through it. Other people don't have that. Young people don't have it. They're not here. They're just 20-year-olds 20 just aren't here. I should see a couple hundred. I see maybe two a weekend. And, it's, I, and I, don't, I don't know how to revert. <laughs> as long as they have that deep anxiety, they're never going to have hope. Oh, and I don't know how to change that. I, they're having this big meeting over in Rome. I was on Channel 16 the other night talking about it. How do, how do we get young people to church? Not for our sake, but for theirs. I need them, you need them, to replace us old people. But they're not getting it. I, I worry enough about us. I worry a lot about them. Because when you've lost hope, you've lost everything. And you've lost God. And if you've lost God, the story is over. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. Our deacon will put our prayers before the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the universal church, the synod in Rome, will allow the Holy Spirit to guide and lead the church in ways of compassion, love, and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations torn apart by war and civil unrest, that they may seek peaceful alternatives to violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to carry their crosses, may they receive grace, strength, and hope from the Christian community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all first responders, our military, and those doing dangerous jobs, that the Holy Spirit may guide them and protect them daily. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers who see God's face in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for Dolores and Joseph Merrick, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may be with Jesus in heaven forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end the petitions by praying our vision prayer. Jesus, Jesus we, we are, are your, your people. people. We, we praise, praise you as Savior and Lord. Deepen our, our commitment, commitment to you, your church, and each, and each other. other. Let us all share more actively in spreading the good news of God present among us. Help us reach out to those who have not yet experienced the joy of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us in living your gospel of compassion and love in service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, your spouse Joseph, and our beloved saints, Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, and Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray the sacrifices instituted by your command, and through these sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful love, graciously complete the sanctifying work you have begun in us. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You laid the foundations of this world 
and arranged the changings of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image, setting humanity over the whole world and all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like to do fall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood blood of a new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who die in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
couple quick announcements. If you didn't re remember to return your discipleship response form for any things, any gifts you might want to do around here, gifts you can offer, send it in. We've picked up a couple new ministers, Eucharistic ministers, lectors, etc. That's what we need, lots of them. The, uh, we have a holy hour coming up Thursday night. We had a great one this past Thursday. This Thursday, it's going to be more of an interactive between me and you about, from Philippians, Paul's line, life means Christ. Life means Christ. It's one of Paul's best lines. That's Thursday night at 7. And right out here after Mass at noon, we'll have the blessing of pets. Sounds like a real good job for the deacon, not me. I'm not going to get bit by some rangy dog. So that'll be his job, whatever. Then youth group kids are walking to the cathedral today. That should be entertaining. But, so if you're in high school and you want to have a little exercise and pray the rosary down at the cathedral, join us. Let us stand to pray. Graciously grant us, O Lord, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received, that we may be transformed into the body of Christ, which we have consumed. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to be God. God. Do number 300 again.